if you haven't watched my previous video i would encourage you to go watch it and see how i achieved this image if you're one who follows me on instagram you might probably have watched this already and if you're just watching this for the very first time and you're wondering how this particular shot was achieved i'll link it i'll link in the description box below i'll leave a card or i'll link the card here and just go watch the previous video and learn how this image was achieved so in today's video we're looking at changing this image from this to this and to that when it comes to editing in lightroom and photoshop hey what's up guys my name is kajoji and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're one who is interested in learning how to light up in your studio how to light up outdoors how to edit how to color grade and how to retouch please consider subscribing to the youtube channel before you leave can you leave a thumbs up for this video at the end or even right now which helps me a lot and also make sure you share the video at the end just so that other people can also come and learn from my youtube channel operation 10k is still on so let's just push my videos out to people push my channel out to people just so that they can come and watch learn something new and do subscribe before they leave all right let's just jump right into today's video i'm going to take you through step by step what i did and how i got or how i ended up getting my image to what you saw earlier so after taking the image i realized that the lighting on her face was quite a bit too much and i wanted to dim her down secondly she was a dark skin model and thirdly whatever it is i did whatever it is i would do in lightroom is going to turn them more and introduce more reds the theme was to keep the green um theme a lot more in the image rather than take the green theme away so whatever be the case you're not going to take away the green theme you're going to keep the green theme and probably enhance the green theme more so first things first let's come back to the snapshots first things first i would have to let me hide all these first things first i would have to change my camera profile to camera standard and the reason why you're seeing the loss of saturation is as a result of these sliders i've moved over here and i also tell people that whenever you want to hide any mistake with respect to dark skin models or when you want to enhance how melanated a dark skin model is kindly look at your exposure with respect to you know the basic tab and also the luminance in the hsl or color tab so i reduced my exposure didn't add contrast here i like to add contrast using the dh slider because it really affects the blacks and not the whites and the blacks when it comes to moving contrast also i reduce the highlight i open up my shadows reduce my whites because i wanted back details within the flowers over here and reduce my blacks also so this is what happened within the camera basic tab moving on to our next tab which is the camera calibration calibration deals with the colors registered on your camera pixels so it's more like um, whatever colors the rgb or yeah the rgb sensor picked on your camera is what it is you can use to calibrate it so you move it into the direction you want sometimes images lose color tend to lose color and some youtubers think the right way to introduce or reduce saturation with respect to using lightroom as um, a push processing tool to use a camera calibration so that's why you, and i buy into that idea and that's why you can see my camera calibration that's my second tab and this is what i did in my camera calibration this is a before and this is the after changing the hue of you know the skin adding some color moving the green in the direction i want yeah the camera calibration does that very well next on the list is my hso most powerful color grading tool in lightroom so i turn that on and immediately i turn that on you can see whatever it is i did in here in my previous video in one of my previous video where i saw i spoke about the hsl tab with respect to color graded i did show you that when you move the hue of the oranges towards the red and you're moving that of the red towards the orange you're harmonizing these two color hues just so that they don't look separate when it comes to skin toning with skin toning in lightroom you find them within your oranges and your reds and sometimes even within your yellows so this is what happened in the hsl tab before and after color grading this is what we see within my shadows i added some blues just to you know punch out that greenish look that dead greenish look so before the hsl this is how the green was looking after the hsl even before color grading it had some hints of yellows in it but pushing in blues pushing blues into greens 
make it look more um, um i don't know the right word for it. it pushes it more into the kind of greens i'm looking out for this camo green right and in the mid tones i still added some bluish cyan to this and in the highlights more bluish cyan then the next on the line which sends the image in the direction i want adding the contrast adding the punch adding the whites adding the blacks moving it in the direction i want was my tone curve so within my point curve you can see me moving my whites down just because i want to reserve the white here on the fly and also probably on the skin the next thing i did was to you know open up my mid tones a little bit and open up or um, add a matte feel to or within my shadows also i added a slight s curve within all the available channels here just to add color contrast to each and every color available or color, um, yeah, each and every color available here within the tone curve and here in the parametric curve as you can see this is what i did so this is what sold that contrasty punchy look when it came to adding the final touches all right so it adds color it adds saturation and i love whatever it is i'm seeing with respect to effect i added some vignette just to take away that annoying spill that happened over here and as much as i restricted this the spill of light you know because i'm shooting with leds and the bundles aren't that big enough you'll probably see a little bit spill so yeah that's where the vignetting came in we'll do more of that in photoshop with respect to detailing i keep my detailing at 20. i should have left it at 40 40 40 the default settings one thing i really didn't like about using a C, I think that wasn't my 6d i used someone's 6d my 6d wasn't available and recently i found out that that 6d had a problem with focus and so uh, most of my images were out of focus and but you know blurry images are not are not something i would like to throw away i've even edited a lot of blurry images posted some of them in a lot of people didn't know i might probably retain some of the textures back in photoshop so let's see how we do that with respect to transform you know straighten the image lens correction and all that so this is what the lens correction did Right. Okay. so this is whatever happened in lightroom we moved our image from looking like this to looking like this the light behind her is giving us attention that this is where our subject is so if you want if you really really want to learn how this image was achieved kindly go check out that video now let's jump right into photoshop and see whatever it is we did in photoshop so with respect to photoshop let's zoom out we'll start from the bottom all right this is the image that came in from lightroom first thing i did was to heal and liquefy certain parts of the image so i moved this i moved the hand i liquefied the arm just so that it doesn't look too big it was looking a little bit bigger for me so i took it out and i took out some annoying blotches on the background just to keep this concentration on my subject next thing i did was to use my color lookup table my photoshop lights to tone down the reds with respect to whatever it is i got from lightroom so that's that as you can see and i reduce the expo or i mean i reduce the opacity i don't like keeping opacity high but if i want to show you whatever the opacity this is what my photoshop lights can make your image to look like when it comes to skin toning if this was what i was going in for i would have left it but i needed some level of natural neutrality if we put it that way so i left it at 20. i mean i left it at 20 just to have a bit of the reds in there i was toning them down not completely eliminating them the next thing on the list was to dodge and bend mostly when i color correct or color grade my images if and when i do that in photoshop the next thing i do is dodging and bending fixing tones making sure the background and everything is in check making sure um, the image is in the direction i want so if i show you whatever happened within the dodge i dodged even some of the material my subject and with the bend the background so you know this is what happened before and after before and after 
so my decision to add another layer of you know smoothening or blending came as a result of the forehead over here i felt it was too strong and using dodging and burning would expose a lot so i employed the service of using frequency separation subtly right so if you can see it blends out the forehead just so that it feels natural rather than being forced taking a look at the frequency separation opacity slider has been reduced so i even don't really keep it too much in there someone might ask but the image is already bled how are you able to going to retain the texture and use frequency blah 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 frequency separation is not there to maintain texture it's not there to do whatever it is you people think it should do mostly i use it to blend out certain parts of the image when i feel like it's too it's, um, it's going to be difficult using dodging and burning to blend it sometimes i use dodging and burning to mess it up and fix it and it's a long process but using the two hand in hand probably works all the time the next thing i did was to add some selective coloring push some blues within my blacks not within my shadows this time around because in lightroom you saw me push it in my shadows and this time around i'm pushing it into my blacks and it works like this is the before and this is the after selling the green look even more opacity at 20 we move the next thing i did was to whiten the eye then add sharpening i added this is the first time i've added um three levels of sharpness right to an entire image i didn't selectively sharpen certain parts i did it to the entire image added some noise to bring more texture to the image then to sell the look i added more vignette to this save this went back to lightroom dynamic link and dynamic editing however you call it then i added more vignette did i sorry i added more blacks instead of vignettes because it was looking a little bit hazy for me so i added more blacks to push out the color i needed i should have mentioned this with respect to the editing in lightroom moving sliders around and moving hues around i forgot to mention the fact that i used radial filters to bring certain parts of the image to life so if i toggle the radial filter off you can see the hue or the spill of light on the top of the background and also the red dying over right so i use radial filter to bring back a little bit of saturation in the reds and the color just to sell the look i was going in, in for so yeah this is all i did this is all i did in lightroom and this is all i did in photoshop so i hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you grasp on something new i hope you added to your vast knowledge how to go about working with images you might have shot with led light i look to producing more videos with respect to using led light in the future just so that you can know that you don't really need expensive gears you don't really need too much of you know accoutrement as we will say to produce beautiful images led lights are powerful enough to produce whatever images you need to produce if you can afford to buy more kudos to you if you can afford to just buy one you can use it right all you need to know is to figure out how to use your camera with the appropriate camera settings to produce or grab the appropriate image you need to produce thank you so much for watching today's video make sure you leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video any questions at all down in the description box below or down in the comment section box below can you leave that comment i'm going to link the previous video on how i edited i mean how i shot this amazing image and that's the editing part so i'm glad you enjoyed this particular video also make sure you share this video and if you're one who's interested in photography lighting shooting editing coloring and retouching can you please consider subscribing to my youtube channel we are we are on an operation of 10k 10k subscribers by the end of the year and i'll be glad if you happen to be one of the family or you happen to be one of the people to join in on this tribute dutch family thank you so much and i'll see you in my next video and please don't forget to subscribe and make sure and understand that practice doesn't make one perfect practice improves an individual bye